Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, June 22nd, around 11 a.m. Mountain Time 2021. The models are in, and it looks like there is a respite to the drought in the southwest. But the big story, tornado confirmed as severe weather tears through Chicago area. Damage reported. Keep calm. It's tornado time. Wildfires erupt after the hottest week in history. Wait, what? The hottest week in history? That's impossible. Last week featured one of the worst heat waves in decades. Oh, okay, they're lying. Yes, we thought so. Back to the tornado. And there is the storm in question that went through Chi-Town. Huge amounts of lightning strikes and huge amounts of damage. And we will get to that later in the show. Pittsburgh weather, cool conditions after cold front brings severe storms. These storms moved through the Northeast over the last 24 to 48 hours and lots of damage in central New York and other areas. So heads up. There it is, Naperville. A home on the 1800 block of Princeton Circle is leveled after an overnight tornado happened this weekend. Take a look at that. Absolutely devastating. And that was an EF3 tornado coming in at 140 miles per hour. There was also, on Sunday and Monday, tornadoes recorded in Pella, Iowa, St. Joseph County, Indiana, and Steuben County, Indiana, all EF1s. The EF3, well, that was in Naperville, and it was quite devastating. Now, you're still in a severe risk as of today. Norfolk, Des Moines, Lincoln. There's a slight risk in the severe outlook there. Hail and wind potential Tuesday for Des Moines, from Norfolk to Des Moines there, and... Here is the available strong daytime heating, which will trigger those storms. So heads up, Iowa looks like you are in the crosshairs for most of that, especially the southwest there in Iowa. Now we do have some footage from the storm damage in Naperville, the EF3 tornado, and we'll share it with you now. Um, Tom, some video of the storm damage in Naperville. Oh, uh, wow. This is just coming into our newsroom. As you can see, my goodness. Uh, wow. Just a vehicle there destroyed. Uh, by the uh, another vehicle well, flipped over. Well, an upside down there vehicle. Yeah, this. Imagine how strong that was to yeah. flip a car upside down oh, like, like that. that. My Look goodness. at that. What Based on that. that video, gentlemen. Wow. I guess they cut us off for a commercial, but you you could clearly see the damage there. Extensive damage reported in Naperville. And here's a list of the roads closed through South Mississippi due to flooding after Tropical Storm Claudette battered the region. You can see some of the flooded roads there. And those houses, yep, they're on stilts. Tropical Storm Claudette flooding in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. That's in South Mississippi. Tropical Storm Claudette brought heavy A lot of people that have cats are... <laughs> of course. There's the commercial. Tropical storm Claudette brought heavy rains, tornadoes, and even more flooding across South Mississippi. Due to flooding, several roads are closed in the Gulf Coast. And take a look in Harrison County. There's a list, Gulfport, Stone County. We don't know if these roads are still closed, but if you're planning on traveling in that region, that's just a heads up for road closures. Severe thunderstorms in the Central Plains. Flooding threat in the Southeast. Western critical fire weather. Scattered severe storms are possible today across parts of Nebraska and Iowa. As we showed you, the warning zones, including the threat for large hail and damaging winds. Heavy showers and thunderstorms occurring today along the front stretched across the southeast U.S. may result in areas of flash, urban, and small stream flooding. Critical fire weather conditions are forecast today for parts of the interior west, but a respite is coming. And take a look at the moisture moving into the Four Corners region. Good news. But as that system moves east that we're talking about today, take a look at the rain potential here. Indiana, uh, on, in western Indiana, you're looking at could be 14 inches of rain in Illinois and Indiana, right on the state line there. So, and that moves all the way over here into Missouri there. So heads up, that's a lot of water and that's just coming in the next seven days. But you can see the moisture in the Southeast, the Four Corners region, we have been devoid. It looks like there's some light moisture covering most of Arizona. And then as we get into the beginning of July here, it looks like the monsoon's gonna kick in and wow, we could use five or six inches of rain in our region, certainly. So that's good news. Large earthquake could set off Mauna Loa volcano, researchers say. Well, do they? Kilauea has been Hawaii's star volcano in recent decades, and in recent years, the uptick is real. And a large earthquake could set off Mauna Loa. 
So we'll keep a close eye on that. Seismic update. We have a large earthquake at Mauna Loa. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, a small earthquake. 2.6 southwest of Volcano, Hawaii. So there is activity going on there. All is quiet on the western front where we brought our attention over to Mexico quake the other day here. Still some activity happening in this region. But nothing major. Worldwide Volcano News. All is quiet on the western front. Etna puffing and passing its paroxysm every 24 to 48 hours to 20,000 feet. San Gay to 20,000. Reventador, Suanosima. The normal actors. Nothing spectacular. Now probing deeper into the origins of cosmic rays with geometric Brownian motion. We know cosmic rays pass through the earth. They pass through us. And they even have the potential to change our DNA. We also know that cosmic rays are at an all-time high. In just the last few years, we've reached the cosmic ray maximum of human history, and that's only going to increase. Cosmic rays will become ever higher as we move forward, especially with the waning magnetosphere and the potential for grand solar minima. Now, the one thing we don't know is where these babies come from. We do delineate them as galactic cosmic rays and solar cosmic rays. And those are cosmic rays that either come from the sun, solar cosmic rays, and cosmic rays that come from the entire universe, galactic cosmic rays. The problem with the galactic cosmic rays is we don't know where they're coming from. And this theory, probing deeper into the origins of cosmic rays using geometric Brownian motion, is going to try to tackle where these rays are coming from. Quite interesting. Now, new discovery shows human cells can write RNA sequences into DNA. I shared this about a week ago, and I'm going to share it again. This new study may be not new at all. It may have been withheld. Why? Because of the experimental thing that's going around that uses this. Now, if RNA can change or write into the DNA, what's happening to hundreds of millions of people right now? Well, confidential documents reveal Moderna sent an mRNA coronavirus vaccine candidate to university researchers before there was even a COVID-19 pandemic. Very pandemic. UN warns of worst cascade of human rights setbacks in our lifetime. Well, they're happening right now and we're living it. So we're well aware, UN. Thank you. Major ocean observing satellite starts providing science data. And it's spectacular. Take a look at that. Sentinel-6. The latest spacecraft to monitor sea surface height releases its first science measurements to users. Now, this map shows sea level measured by Sentinel-6. Red areas are higher than normal, and blue areas are lower than normal. And it's showing that the entire coast of the entire North American continent, below normal, extremely below normal. Hmm. I wonder how that works out with the maths. Catastrophic sea level rise and all. Tatumi in my garden, or Tatum. Fun fact, according to the National Gardening Association, 32% of gardeners grow summer squash in their gardens. According to that same survey, 43 million households in the U.S. have food gardens. With a little math, we can determine that at least 14 million Americans grow and feed squash to their families. That's about 320 million families less than should be. <laughs> now, squash is amazing. And tatumi is amazing, too, because not only is it a summer squash, but if you leave it on the stem, it becomes a winter squash. So only one plant needed. Now, in 1499, navigator Amerigo Vespucci saw the stilt houses of Lake Mares. Oh, well, I don't have to read that. But in, in the end, they found the squash. Now, tatume or tatum is a dual-purpose squash you can eat when it's young, as little as 45 days as you would any summer squash as a zucchini, the young fruits have soft skin, delicate flesh, undeveloped seeds, and are sweet and delicious. Or you can let them sit on the vine and harden up for the winter, and they store for a long time. So excellent tip for the prepper garden. Get growing. A full strawberry moon, plus much more this week up in the sky. Let's cover at least the strawberry moon. The full moon will be June 24th at 2.39 p.m., which means June 24th, look up at night, and it will be a delight. June's full moon is known as the full strawberry moon. It's the last full moon of spring or the first full moon of summer. What a bummer. No, actually, that's awesome. The name of the moon comes from the ripening of strawberries that are ready to be gathered. June's full moon is also known as the blooming moon for flowering season, the green corn moon, which means it's time to tend young crops. 
and many other interesting events, including I just saw Venus as the sun was setting the other night. So look up, for goodness sakes. Uh, don't want to talk about that. Massive doomsday glacier may be more stable than initially feared. For weeks, if not months, headline after headline, completely indoctrinating the entire population of a massive doomsday glacier that's going to end humanity. Well, they're wrong. Isn't that hilarious? Transitions to marine ice cliff instability controlled by ice thickness, gradients, and velocity, not by humans or climate change. <laughs> so, no doomsday coming, as you can imagine. Now, Australia rejects UN climate warning over the Great Barrier Reef status. We've had Jennifer Morohassi on the show, an expert on the Great Barrier Reef, and she is claiming that they are being strong-armed by fake science to claim that the Great Barrier Reef is in danger of dying due to climate change. The only problem with that is it's not. And now UNESCO has gotten involved, and they are threatening if Australia does not claim that the Great Barrier Reef is in decline and in danger of dying, well, they're just idiots. So we're going to get Jennifer Morahassi on the show to try to work out what UNESCO is doing here and why they're strong arming Australia into claiming the Great Barrier Reef is dying when it's not. And if they don't, well, there will be hell to pay. All the satellites in space could crack open the ozone layer. I did a great podcast over at Magnetic Reversal News on this very topic. Satellite mega constellations create risks in low Earth orbit. The atmosphere and on Earth, excellent paper coming out quite recently on inadvertent geoengineering due to space junk. And it's all Elon Musk's fault. Now, Sombre Day, a friend of the channel, uh, one of our premier um, presenters at our very first LeeCon, Robert Felix, an awesome guy, the author of Not By Fire, But By Ice, and Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps, lost his life on June 10th, shortly after receiving the jab. A completely healthy man in the prime of his life declined within weeks and is now no longer with us. I had scheduled an interview with Robert this month and that obviously won't be happening. He also won't be joining us at LeakCon 2 in the desert. And our hearts go out to Robert's family and all those people lost to all this nonsense. We love you, Robert. Now tracking the White House YouTube channel, a great site called 81m.org. Come check it out. Shows you all of the White House videos and how pathetic this administration is. Almost no one in the country even watches the videos or cares. And the majority of people that do watch it hate it. The official approval rating, let's say, for the press briefing today, 1%. Eight thumbs up, 400 thumbs down. It hasn't even started. What is going on? Dystopian world much? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Roger Waters has something to say, and you better listen. I'd just like to say something very brief. This, this is something that I actually put in my folder when I came out here today. You have no idea what it is. Nobody does, because it arrived on the internet to me this morning. It's a request for the rights to use my song, Another Brick in the Wall 2, uh, in the making of a film to promote Instagram. So it's a missive. <laughs> it's a missive from Mark Zuckerberg to me, right? Arrived this morning with an offer of a huge, huge amount of money. And the answer is, fuck you. No fucking way. And I, I only mention that because this is an, an insidious, it's the insidious movement of them to take over absolutely everything, you know. So those of us who do have any power, and I do have a little bit, uh, in terms of the control of the publishing of my songs, I do anyway. So I will not be a party to this bullshit. Zuckerberg. Roger Waters, a hero to the people. Zuckerberg, not so much. Buys an island for privacy with the money he made selling yours. 
Hope you got something out of the video. Our hearts and prayers go to the family of Robert Felix and all those truth seekers and the lessons we can learn from the mistakes they've made. Be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share this video. You're all heroes, and we love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.